Ordinary people change the world. I am Anne Frank by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I am Anne Frank. When I was born, my sister loved laughing at my big ears. Look, they're huge! I also had big eyes and the cutest smile. Oh, she's adorable. Look at her ears! As a girl, I loved the same things many kids love. Playing hide and seek and tag, ice skating. And are those my skates? And going to the movies. I collected autographs and knew the names of every celebrity. That's Rin Tin Tin. One of the other things I really loved was writing stories. This was my teacher, Henrika Kuperis. She was so encouraging. Wonderful job, Anne. One other thing that's important to know about me is that I'm Jewish. That's my religion. I believe in God and in helping to make the world a better place. But where I was born, in Germany, there were people known as Nazis who didn't like those of us who were Jewish or other groups who were different from them. Back then, the Nazis were run by a terrible leader named Adolf Hitler, who promised to make Germany strong again. Don't buy from Jews. Germans unite. Why are they being so mean? They don't even know us. He believed that Germans were superior, and he blamed the Jews for all of Germany's problems, even though we hadn't done anything wrong. To protect us from the Nazis, my family became refugees and moved to a city called Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Life was good there for years, until May 10, 1940, when the Germans came to the Netherlands too. The Nazis were trying to take over the world. We need to leave here, now. It's not safe anymore. We tried to leave the Netherlands and go to the United States, but we couldn't. You need to fill out more forms if you want to be an immigrant. But my family, if we stay here... I'm sorry. More forms, please. When the Germans arrived in the Netherlands, they passed new laws here. At first, Jews weren't allowed in public parks, beaches, pools, or in libraries. Forbidden to Jews? We can't go swimming? Jews are not wanted here. Then they said we couldn't go to the movies. But I love the movies. We don't serve Jews here. Eventually, we weren't allowed to ride our own bikes, drive our own cars, or buy food at certain restaurants. I just want to feed my family. No Jews allowed. One of the worst days was when they said we had to leave our school and only be with other Jewish kids. I'm sorry. Those are the new rules. No Jews allowed. I'll miss you, Anne. I'll miss all of you. Every day, it seemed to get worse. In April 1942, the Nazis made us wear these Jewish stars with the Dutch word for Jew, Yod. Why do we have to wear these whenever we go out? So they can always identify us. If we got caught outside without our star, we'd get in trouble. I know it sounds scary, but this isn't a story about fear. It's a story about hope. Even when bad things happen, there are good things all around. On Friday, June 12th, 
I woke up really early. It was my birthday! Every year, my parents put all my presents out on the table. And this year, I couldn't wait for one particular gift. A diary! It had its own little lock. I love it! I started writing immediately. Dear Kitty. Kitty was the name I gave to my diary. I wanted the diary to be my friend. A few weeks later, we got terrible news. What is it, dear? Margot, our daughter. They sent her a call-up notice. We knew what a call-up really meant. The Nazis would send people to a concentration camp, a prison where Jews were locked up and made to work all day and night. There was almost nothing to eat or drink. If you went there, escape was nearly impossible. My parents were running out of options. If we stayed, the Nazis would come for my sister. If we tried to leave, they'd hunt us down. There's only one choice. We need to hide. My parents told us to start packing. We could only take our most important things. The first thing I grabbed was this diary. A book? Yes, a place to hold my dirty thoughts. We wore layers of clothes so no one would see us carrying suitcases. The hardest part was saying goodbye to my cat. The neighbors will take good care of her, I promise. I love you, Marcha. As we snuck out, there were four of us. Then, another family of three met us there. This was our hiding spot, a small area at the back of my father's office, the secret annex. The bookcase covered the entryway and could swing shut so no one would find us. Our hiding place has now become a true hiding place. Our new home was about the size of a one-bedroom apartment for seven of us. This was my parents' living room and bedroom. How are we all going to fit? Attic, bookcase entrance, and this was for me and my sister. Upstairs was another room. It was a bedroom, kitchen, and living room all in one for the Van Pels the other Jewish family hiding with us. Plus, there was a place for their son, Peter. Since there were still people working in Dad's old office, we'd spend our days up here on the higher floor, so no one would hear us. It wasn't an easy place to live. There's no hot water. I know. Make the best of it. And what do you mean we can't flush the toilet during the day? If you do, people will hear the noise and will be arrested. Beans again? Shh. The workers downstairs will hear. Beans again? And beans tomorrow. During weekdays, we had to whisper. We can never talk in a normal voice. All the windows were covered, and since shoes were noisy on the wood floors, we usually wore socks to be extra quiet. Shh. One wrong move, and the Nazis might find us. It would have been easy to complain, but I decided to look at the bright side. It may be damp and lopsided, but there's probably not a more comfortable hiding place in all of Amsterdam. No, in all of Holland. To make it feel more normal, I decorated my walls with pictures of movie stars. My dad surprised me by bringing along my collection of magazines. To make everyone laugh, Peter and I would dress up. He wore his mom's dress, and I wore his suit. Ta-da! 
There was one big bright spot though. The non-Jewish helpers who risked their own lives to protect us. This is Meet Chis. She'd bring us groceries and tell us what was happening in the world. Here's more food. And Anne, I got you a little present. This is Johannes Kleiman, who brought me my favorite books, including fairy tales and ones about real historical heroes. And that's Johann Fosco, who built the bookcase that hid us. Jan Gies, Pep Vosco, Victor Kugler. The Nazis threatened to punish anyone who helped the Jewish people. But these amazing people decided it was more important to do the right thing and help us. They weren't the only ones. This is my dentist, Fritz Pfeiffer. I know there are seven of you, but he needs a place to hide, too. He can stay. We'll make home. Our hiding spot was tiny, but when someone needs help, you can't turn away. We hid in the secret annex for two years and one month. I went to school here. I wanted to be a famous writer to make an impact on people's lives. We took our school books with us, and the helpers would bring more. We studied every day until 12.30. After that, we'd peel potatoes. On weekends, we could listen to the radio. With eight of us crammed together, our world was very small. But if you look for what's good, you'll find it. This was the attic my favorite spot. It had the one window that wasn't covered, where I could see the blue sky and this one chestnut tree. I grew up here. I saw the world from here. Who knows? Maybe our religion will teach the world and all the people in it about goodness. As long as this exists, the sunshine and this cloudless sky. And as long as I can enjoy it, how sad can I be? As long as you can look fearlessly at the sky, you'll know that you're pure within and will find happiness once more. I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are truly good at heart. And eventually, the world saw me. In my life, there were many reasons to be sad and lonely and scared, but there were also many reasons to love and laugh and hope. You can always find light in the darkest places. That's what hope is. It's a fire within you. You decide when to light it and when it burns bright. Nothing can put it out. Hitler and the Nazis were defeated at the end of World War II. Six million Jews, including Anne Frank, were killed in what is now known as the Holocaust. By remembering and telling Anne's story, we make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. Whatever our religion, wherever we're from, we have a responsibility to one another. Anne's diary was found by Meep Peace, who never read it. Eventually, she gave it to Anne's father. Today, Anne Frank's diary is one of the most read, most inspiring books in the world. More than one million people visit the Anne Frank house in Amsterdam each year. In 2010, Anne's chestnut tree was blown down in a storm. But today, there are locations all over the world where its saplings were planted and new chestnut trees bloom. In the Jewish faith, there's a saying, if a person saves one life, it's as if they've saved an entire world. Throughout your life, you'll find people who need help. Be a helper. Be the one who does the right thing. When you see something that's unfair, do not be silent. Sometimes it will be hard. When it is, look up. See the beauty of the world 
and see the beauty in people. Now you know my story, and I'm a part of yours. Never forget, the world depends on it. I am Anne Frank, and I believe that people are truly good at heart. Think of all the beauty in yourself and in everything around you and be happy. Anne Frank Margot Otto Anne and Edith Frank, 1941 Yuda, badge that Jewish people were forced to wear. Otto Frank's office building, middle, 1947 Pages from Anne's diary Anne's room in the secret annex Timeline. June 12, 1929. Born in Frankfurt. 1933. Adolf Hitler and the Nazis come to power. 1934. Moves to Amsterdam. 1939. World War II begins. 1942. Jews in the Netherlands forced to wear yellow stars. 1942. Receives first diary. 1942. Begins hiding in the secret annex. 1944. Everyone in the secret annex is found. 1945. Anne and Margot die in Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. 1945. World War II ends. 1947. Becomes a published author. 1960. Anne Frankhaus opens to the public. In memory of Anne Frank and the six million Jewish victims of the Holocaust, and in honor of all the righteous helpers who risked their lives by coming to the aid of those who needed it, Brad Meltzer and Christopher Eliopoulos. For historical accuracy, we used Anne Frank's actual words whenever possible. For more of her true voice, we recommend and acknowledge The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. Special thanks to Sharon R. Douglas and Maureen McNeil of the Anne Frank Center for Mutual Respect, as well as Holocaust-era historian Peter Black for their input on early drafts. This is Danny Campbell. We hope you have enjoyed this unabridged production of I Am Anne Frank by Brad Meltzer. This program was directed by Scott Cresswell. Executive producers Aaron Blank and Dan Zitt. Edited by Chris Benelli, Cresswell Creative Services. Text copyright 2020 by 44 Steps, Inc. Production copyright 2020, Penguin Random House, LLC. All rights reserved.